Friends, the gospel today has three or four strong images. First is water, fire, baptism, division, right? All these you hear in the gospel reading today. Also in the first reading, it is echoed in the life of Jeremiah the prophet. So water and fire are not my friends, but I love fish. <laughs> I can't go swimming in deep waters because of what happened when I was in third grade. A friend of mine got drowned. He was very good fish. Uh, I mean, very good swimmer. His parents were fishermen. We lost Sebastian when he was eight, and I I saw that happen. So it's a nightmare for me. So I can swim in water, which is four feet. <laughs> I can swim in six feet, but you, you experts have to be around me because I'll panic, right? Because that memory comes back to mind. But I love fish. So, but water cleanses, it also destroys, right? If you see the hurricanes, water destroys, it also purifies, it also brings growth. How about fire? Fire also destroys. Thank God we didn't have too many fires this summer, right? Otherwise we get all the smoke and we get all the effects of fires and people's lives are destroyed. But fire also has the quality to purify. If you want to have the pure gold or silver to purge all what isn't gold and silver, it has to go through the fires and be purified. So fire has that quality as well. Jesus in today's gospel also talks about baptism and how he longs to receive this baptism. Well, I thought Jesus was already baptized, right? Why is he talking about baptism? Well, he's talking about being immersed through his passion and death on the cross. He can't wait to save us. He can't wait to redeem us. He can't wait to purify us through his passion, death, his blood, and resurrection. And as Saint Cyril of Jerusalem, talking about this passage, says about that fire part of it, he says, well, it is the Holy Spirit that Jesus wants to give the world. He wants the Holy Spirit to be poured on the whole earth so that all of us will be transformed, will be counted through adoption as sons and daughters of God. It's a great powerful image. So on the cross is where Jesus wants to have his final baptism so that all of us, through his immersion into his, by his blood and death, he wants us to save us. And that's what he did. Ultimately, that's what he did. If you want to think about it, think about James and John who says, Hey, Jesus, can I sit one at your right, one, one at your left? And he says, mm, Well, let's think about it. Can you drink the cup that I'm going to drink? And they say, Yeah, sure. Can you drink the baptism? Can you embrace the baptism that I'm supposed to embrace? And they say, Yes. You know, the crucifixion. But then Jesus says, Well, to sit at my right and left, it's not mine to give. They are thinking, well, Jesus, why did you say that? Couldn't you say that earlier, right? We wouldn't have answered all these questions for you. But anyway, so those are, those are the images that we have. And then finally we come, to, we come to the part of division, you know. That's a serious question. You know, Jesus, really, Jesus, you came to divide us and our families? You know, all of us, whether Christian, Catholics, even non-believers, they will always love Jesus for his teachings such as love thy neighbor, right? Love your enemies, right? Show the other cheek if someone slaps you on the one, right? Not kisses you, but slaps you. And then the fourth one, you know, do not judge and you won't be judged. You know? People accept these teachings. And now Jesus says, I've come to place division starting with families, right? Families. It's very specific. And what kind of division is Jesus talking about? 
is talking about division between husband and wife, children and parents. I don't think Jesus had to come to, you know, place division between mother-in-laws and daughter-in-laws, right? That already happened. And Micah was quoting it in chapter 7 of the Old Testament. You know, Jesus is simply quoting prophet Micah and how the Israelites were divided on the teachings of the prophets and how they were not ready to repent, how they would face destruction because they weren't listening to the teachings of the prophets and this Babylonian captivity that would happen. Micah is, is talking about it and Jesus simply quotes Micah in today's, in today's gospel wish we had Micah in, this, in the first reading, right? We would have got the story right on. But there's reason because you see Jeremiah is again preaching the truths of faith and that is opposition to him. The king opposes him. His courtiers oppose him. All people, many people oppose him. And Jeremiah is all by himself but is not afraid to speak the truth of faith. He's not afraid even to the cost of his life. And you know what happens to him. So the teachings of Christ, we come back to division, part of it will bring division. But a disciple is called to follow Jesus at all cost. A disciple is called to follow Jesus at all cost. We can't do cherry peeking when it comes to discipleship it costs like you see in the life of Jeremiah so different relationships are affected when it comes to following Jesus if you if you recall you know some time back with the would-be followers of Jesus one of them said well let me go and bury my father you know that's the duty I have. And what does Jesus say to him? Well, let the dead bury their dead. You come and follow me. Think about it for a second. How, how would his mother think about the son not coming to, to the funeral? Think about his brothers upset about their brother not coming to this funeral. Think about his sister. Not, not seeing their brother come to bury their father. It's a division, right? That would be a serious point of division in the family. But that man goes and he does what he has to. He knows the cost of discipleship. He does not follow Jesus, not at least in that story. Maybe he thought about it later on. The gospel doesn't tell us. But it, the message is the cost of discipleship. What and how it would cost us to follow Jesus. Discipleship obviously affects family lives. And, and so in, in the early church we have a quote from... Ambrose of Milan, he was a mentor of Augustine, he baptized Augustine, a great teacher and scholar. He talks about it, saying that Jesus did not really come to bring division, otherwise why would we have the commandment to love your mother and father, to honor your mother and father, right? So Jesus, what Jesus is trying to teach us is in discipleship that no one has preference over Jesus. Our allegiance to God comes first. Rest everything follows. He doesn't want us to disobey our parents, not at all. All he wants us to do is to give God the first place, right? To love the God with all your heart, soul, mind, strength, Understanding, that's what a disciple does. Hangs around Jesus like we talked about in the past few days. You know, this is a serious 
problem here in so many instances. I can tell you in my early priesthood, there was this young girl who wanted to, be, to become a Catholic. She was Hindu and she was marrying this Catholic boy and she, has gone, she had gone through RCIA and everything without her parents' knowledge. And when her Hindu parents heard about it, they were very upset. They didn't come for her baptism, not their, not their marriage. They wrote to her letters saying that we treat you as dead in our family because you followed the faith that you, that, that you were attracted to, that you were called to. You know, there's another young man who wanted to become a Catholic. He was Christian. Same thing, you know, parents just disowned him even took him out of their will. That's the cost of discipleship. I'm sure they came back, you know, with that Hindu girl who became a Catholic when she had kids. I'm sure they came back to visit the grandkids, right? It always happens. But the cost of discipleship. I know there are some, in, you know, in my priesthood, so many have come and talked to me about, you know, in your family, you know, in your family life, you married a Christian and you're a Catholic and you know for you to come together for for the Holy Mass to celebrate sacraments sometimes is a big discussion it's a big struggle you know but there are others among you who have you know supported and do support your spouses and you're here this morning just doing that you know supporting your spouse and 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 nurturing your faith as well while you support your spouse's faith, you know. But there are others, even Catholic spouses, you know, one goes to church, other does not go to church. And it causes division because he says, I, I believe in science. I don't believe in God, right? It's a common denominator, common discussion nowadays, you know, science and religion. That's why Jesus is saying, yes, I know my teachings, my mission is going to cause division. It is going to cause division. Jesus knew that and so he talks about it today. How about you, you know, good Christian Catholics? What, what, what are some of the things that, you know, causes division between you and you're following Jesus as a disciple, a faithful disciple? Maybe the teachings of Christ that are the teachings of the church today. You agree with one part of it. Your family is divided on the other topic, right? Or you are conflicted on whether this is truly the teaching of Christ in his church, right? So there's so many instances and examples we can go on to understand why Jesus is talking about this division that will happen in family life or individual life and conscience when you follow him. So as you come to Jesus today, think about what is it that keeps me away from following Jesus 100% maybe? Or what is it that's really helping me to follow Jesus with my whole heart as a disciple, as a Christian Catholic? And pray for those people that are really struggling in their faith and, you know, understanding the teachings of Christ. Families that are divided over so many issues in modern culture and society. But Jesus always said that he's going to be with us until the end of time. He always said that it is not going to be easy, right? He always said that you know, if you love your father and mother more than me, you're not worthy to be my disciple. What does that mean? Our preference is Christ and Christ alone first. And family life flows from our love of God to love of our spouse, love of our children, love of our grandchildren, love of our neighbor. That's what God teaches us too. He will never take us away from our family lives because that's how and that's why He created us in the first place. Let's remember that Christ loves us. Let us remember that falling Christ with a cross 
will create a lot of conflicts, but let us remain faithful to him as he teaches us and calls us to. May the Eucharist nurture us, strengthen us just to do that. In the name of the Father, Son, the Holy Spirit.